Matthew Wong was a Canadian artist. He began experimenting with photography while in graduate school, but shifted to drawing in 2012, followed by painting in 2015. His unique, vibrant, charged style incorporated characteristics of fauvism and folk art, which can be seen in his colorful landscapes and still lifes. Despite his short career, Wong achieved critical acclaim for his work, and some call him a modern day Van Gogh. Let's go ahead and use our artist, Matthew Wong, as our inspiration for this interactive drawing of an interior room. To begin this project, I'm grabbing a rectangle and drawing around the rectangular shape. Then I also thought about adding a door, or excuse me, a table that's either round or rectangular with a chair that has either plates and napkins or maybe a bowl of fruit or whatever you want to put on your table. You'll notice I had to erase some of the rectangle to make the table look like it's on the floor and coming out towards us. I slowed it down just a little bit. I didn't want you to miss this. From the corners of my rectangle, draw a diagonal line going towards the corners of the paper. When you do that, you'll have the interior part of your room. I'm also going to be taking a separate piece of paper to start prepping for the door and the window. So I folded the paper in half, made a little tally mark so I know where to cut so that the door fits into that rectangular shape that I began this project with. And now I can use that for my door. I'm gonna use the scraps of my door paper and I'm going to cut that in half and choose one of those pieces of paper that I can use to fold inward to make shutter, shutters for my window. So finding the middle, I'm just gonna go ahead and fold that inward. And now I'll have a basic starting point for my door and my window. All right, now I'm gonna speed it up a little bit cause then I'm gonna start drawing what it is that I want to draw. Maybe you'll draw the door leading towards a bathroom or maybe you'll draw a door that has um, a clock or a picture or you know maybe it's a bedroom what what is behind that door start thinking about what you would like to draw so that it makes it look like <clears throat> you're going to be walking into another area of the room or another area of the house do the same thing for your window once i folded my window now i'm starting to think about what do i want to see through the window what kind of landscape or what kind of picture once I've done that and I have decided what I wanted, I'm gonna go ahead and take a Sharpie and go over all my pencil lines. So now you'll be able to see it a lot better. You'll notice that as I'm drawing and I'm outlining everything, I never glued down anything onto my paper just yet. Because what I'm going to be doing later is creating a watercolor resist. So I wanna save these pieces of paper off to the side. The other thing that I noticed when I did my door and my window is that my Sharpie is going through the paper a little bit that you could see the opposite side. So what I did to fix that is I just redrew what I had on the back side of the picture. For example, once my window is closed, draw the back side of the shutters. There, now you'll see it from either the window closed or the window open, it all makes sense. Now I'll go ahead and move into making my watercolor resist. When I take my crayon, I'm pressing down somewhat hard to create a pattern or a texture similar to Matthew Wong that we looked at at the beginning of the video. A lot of his rooms had different patterns and different textures onto the walls. Sometimes they had zigzag lines, sometimes they had stripes or dashes or bumpy lines. Feel free to use any of the ideas on the line poster to create patterns onto the walls of your interior room. 
please fill up all of the walls with some of your uh, line patterns. I use the same color multiple times on each side of the wall. Diagonal lines, bumpy lines, dashed lines, crisscrossed or hatched lines. And then I'm also going to add one more pattern for the ceiling with some more bumpy lines inside. I love the way this project uses textures and patterns. Let's move into making our watercolor resist. You'll notice I grabbed a painting mat with my watercolor set beside me. When you're using watercolors, please create a puddle of water into the paint, dabbing that onto your paper. When I take my paint, you should still be able to see the crayon lines through the paint. If you don't, your paint is on too thick. Please use plenty of water to show both the paint as well as the crayon lines. You should not have to dig at the paint. Again, create a puddle. Then once you have that puddle of water onto your paint, it should easily and lightly paint over top of your crayon lines to see both the watercolor and the crayon lines. We do not want your paints on very thick at all. Just fill in the extra white space with a light color to create this watercolor resist or watercolor wash. Again, lots of water, only a little bit of paint onto your paper. Just fills it in nicely. Now that I've sped it up, you can see the same method throughout the whole paper. Now while that's drying, I grabbed some crayons and I thought to myself, why don't I go ahead and start coloring some of the items that I used for my door as well as what I need for my window. You'll notice I used a marker to outline and crayons to color on the inside. Again, coloring with crayon is fine, but please outline and highlight with some of those markers as well so that it really stands out and has vibrant colors crayons to color, marker to outline. Don't forget about the outside or when your windows are closed what that would look like. My project has been drying because obviously I'm sped up the video so once it's dry I went ahead and I grabbed some more markers and crayons to add a little bit more color to my table. You'll notice I grabbed a marker and just like my windows and my doors I outlined that too. Lastly, I'm going to go ahead and glue it all together.